My name is Anede Tukwa of number three Arigidi Street. I've, my problem is that I've been coming for this church for some years and I've not been sa I've not yet saved and I want to be saved. So it was last Wednesday when we came to student rally. I was praying that God should let me to be saved because I see some of my sisters the way they behave. Their ways was different from my own. So I was praying when I was sitting down. So when the preacher gave the message, I was praying that God should change me. And when they called the altar call, I came out. I was in, in fact, I was the first person to came out. And they prayed. When they prayed, the pastor said that if you want to save that issue, you have to say what he's saying. And I said what all oh, what he said. And I was saved. Since then, my attitude changed. Even though in my area, everybody was asking me what was wrong. And I said they should help me to praise God that my life was saved. Praise the Lord. My name is Anna Briggs. I live at number 5 Goriola Street, Ajegule. I'm here to test, give my testimony to my God for what he has done for me. I'm a woman who has been seeking for altar for quite 16 years, since 1976. And when the man of God was praying, the man of God was praying, I started shouting, oh my God, I am the woman who has been seeking for altar for quite 16 years. As I went home, as I just stood in, as I went to the toilet, I stood blood and sand. Since then, I'm free from the hand of that altar. And the doctor told me that I'm going to die for the altar. We have been to many, many places for Abali's houses. And the doctor asked me not to eat anything like, um, what will I say, pepper. And I should stop taking Ogogo or anything that I used to take. But since I got to keep my life, all those witchcraft that used to come and disturb me in my life, my God has freed me. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. My name is Patience Ifena. We are living at number 17, Balea Street, Ijagu. My testimony is like this. I was married since 1981. There is no child. We have went to many places to the Arbalis. There is no way. Just 1984, somebody invited me to this church. And as I was started coming, the first day I came with my husband. Then after that, my husband stopped coming. Then I started coming alone. Then again, a friend of mine just came and invited my husband to the church that they call Groom Amoraji. Then my husband told me that I should come to go with him to serve that man. Then I told my husband, I cannot serve a human being. I haven't finished serving my God and I can't serve a human being. Then after that, he said that since I said I'm not going to go with him, I'm going to pack out of the house. I said yes, I will pack instead of me to serve a human being. Then from there we take this matter to my father. Then from there my father said that where the man is going, that is where I will go. Then I said, Father, I cannot go. Where the man is shooking his hand, he told him, Father, do you expect me to shoot my hand with him there? Father, I'm not going to do that. Then from there we came home back again. Then my husband packed all my load outside and he said, I will go. Then I told him that as you have packed the load outside, you are the one that is going to pack them back again to the house. Then from there, we started coming. As, as, I, as I started coming, I was coming, they drove me away from the house for five days. I sleep at a Christian house for two days, then the rest day in a corridor. Then from there, I was still coming. I was coming just September last year. The year that we are saying they asked us to pack away from there. And that day, I did not know that I was pregnant. Then from there, I was coming, my stomach was just swelling. I am surprised. I said, what is this? I don't even know that I was pregnant. Then people are telling me that I was pregnant. I said, how do you know? They say you are pregnant. See, before I know that I was pregnant, it was seven months old. Then from there, by the grace of God, then as they was praying, God delivered my husband from that groomer. Muraji is no more going there again. Then nine, they just on the nine months, God delivered me. And again, my husband is a member of the society that they call Hammer. On the, seven, on the 19th of this month, God just, God just touched him and he burned all those society papers that he used to do. And even again, his own senior brother, his own senior brother who used to say 
I think against the church that I'm going by the grace of God is now coming to this church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm Mrs. Odio. I stay at number four Muili in Oregon. On the third of this month, I traveled to Benin. Immediately I got to Benin, I met my nephew very sick. We rushed him to specialist hospital, so they didn't attend to us. As the boy was in short, very ill, we rushed him to one of the best private hospitals, Belloni. When we got there, we were there throughout that night. On the fourth, I saw people bringing pickup. Sympathizers were all inside crying. Then when they came into the reception, because I don't understand the language they were saying, I asked my mother, and they told me that one 18 years old boy, the first son of the family, has brain, brain access, that that boy has been in that hospital for four months. And that very day, the doctor told them that they should go and get ready because the boy will die. Because the boy was already in coma. He opened the mouth and the tongue was out. He couldn't move any part of the body. Then I remember testimonies in this place, how the Lord has been, how prayers have been sent to people in such things. So I told the people, then I told them, now let us decide. If you are going to follow the word of the doctor, or to follow the word of the Lord that says, I will not die but live. Then I jumped, I said, I am for the Lord's side. Everybody followed me. Then I told them, now you should go out to the town and ask a deeper life member and tell them to come and join me here that a sister is in problem here. So they went out. Later they came with a brother and a sister. Then I told them that this is the problem. And we all went to that boy. Getting to that boy, we prayed. We gave them all the testimonies and we read the Bible. As we were praying, that was around 9 o'clock in the evening. Some of the nurses came to join us and there was revival in that room because the boy was living because the boy was given a separate room to stay. After that, we left. Then in the morning, the, boy, the mother came to me because I was staying with my nephew. Then my sister was telling me, I cannot pray for his child to be sick. I'm praying for another person. Then I told her that, don't worry. There is no problem concerning your son. But this one is somebody I don't know. I know that God will do something. Then that early morning, the mother came to call me. That this boy that cannot move up his hand all these days was driving away mosquito all the night. Then we pray. Praise the Lord. So the, in the evenings, those brothers came, we continue praying. On Thursday, my nephew was discharged. I went because of that boy, I was at Bini on Friday. On Saturday, then I said I will be coming back to Lagos. I went to the boy, I went to the hospital to see the boy. The boy has really improved. Then I told the mother, now you can see what God can do. She said I should give her the address. I said, follow these brethren to the church. They will show you where the church is at Benin Day. So I came back. On, because I came very late on Saturday. I couldn't come to the church on Sunday. And on Monday I had to do washing because of the house was a bit rough. So on Thursday, when I came, and even came late, I was right outside. And before I left Benin, the parents of that boy told me that I should tell our pastor to remember that boy in prayer. I was sick and said, how can I see my brother? Before you see brother, you will have to go through your area leader, zonal leader, before you get, and they will fix the appointment. I was, and brother wasn't in town before I traveled. I said, God, you know how you are going to do it. But to my greatest surprise, I came that day, I met brother preaching. During the time of ministration, he said there is somebody in the hospital. They said that they should tell him that they should pray for the person. I was right outside. I was shouting. Praise the Lord. I was shouting, I am here, I am here. From Belloni Hospital, 18 years old boy. But they said, is there anybody? I was still outside shouting. So brother later prayed that. He prayed for the boy. I was so happy. On the 17th, which is this very Monday that passed, because I told my mother he should, she should be going there and see the boy, and that those brethren should continue. But I thank God very much that the boy is now eating, drinking, and the doctor said that boy will not die. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. 
My brothers and sisters, I came here this evening to testify of all the great things the Lord has been doing in my family since I, get, I got converted. Uh, my senior brother, right back in our village, happens to come in contact with somebody who promised he's going to help him to buy a second-hand car. My name is Brother Fidelis Obeze, and I'm living at number 16 Odusanya Street, Bariga. So he came here with 2,800. And uh, that money was taken from him, and at the car, they never gave him anything. And he kept on coming for that money for so long time. And uh, the last time he was coming, he decided he, he was going to prepare some charm. So he went and prepared the charm. And uh, that very day he came, I wasn't at home. I came back from work, and it was a Thursday like this. I met him at home. I said, you are welcome. He says, okay. I asked him of everybody at home, he says they are fine. I said, today is a Thursday Miracle Revival Hour, that uh, I will be going to church with you. Without hesitation, we came here. He didn't show me that very charmer, and uh, he never told me anything about it. So I came with him, and he never dropped it anywhere in my house, because he knew I would not accept that. So the charm was right in his pocket, and we came here. Praise the Lord. And uh, after the preaching that very day, the man of God started ministering. And uh, immediately he went straight and he said, there is a man here who just came in from Bendo State. That you came in into this state just this evening. And that uh, you came to collect some money from somebody who owns you. And that you have gone to prepare a charm. And that uh, you are with that charm right here. And if you are here, you should raise up your hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now you should raise up your hand and I will pray for you. My brother did not raise up his hand, and I never knew he is the very person. And the man of God continued, and he says, raise up your hand, I will pray for you. He never raised up his hand. And he says, your heart is beating a feet as if it is going to fall out. And he still kept quiet, he never raised up his hand. Then he says, whether you raise up your hand or not, the Lord has said I should pray for you. So he prayed that very evening, and we left for home. The next morning, I got prepared to go to my office. He called me and says, come. He says, if there is a church like this in our own very village, that he would have started attending church immediately he got home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, what happened? He says, he is the very man that the pastor was mentioning yesterday. He, Praise the Lord. It says really that his heart was beating as if it is going to fall out. I then assure him that once the man of God has prayed for anything, and that is the end of that very problem, that he should go now and get his money, and he went and that money was paid him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads for prayer. I want you to tell the Lord that whatever you know you need tonight, He'll give it to you. He's a merciful God and a powerful God. And He's able to bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you because of these testimonies that we have heard. We thank you for the manifestation of your power. We praise and adore you for your love, for the great grace by which you deal with us. We thank you for the miraculous that is always present in our midst. Thank you for all of us who are here tonight. Lord, we believe that you are going to bless us. We know that you are going to remove problems from our lives. Fulfill your word manifest your glory in our midst in jesus name i pray tonight i want you to pay close attention to all that you hear because i want to talk to you from the bible on what to do when prayer seems to fail if you've had a problem and you have prayed over and over and over again. And it appears 
You've used all the fists you think you have. You preach. However fervent you know how to pray. You claim the promises of God as much as you know how. And you've done everything you think you can do in the direction of prayer. And yet, the problem is there. What to do? In Mark chapter 4. Gospel according to Mark chapter 4. From verse 35. And the same day, when the evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now that's the story of the disciples of Jesus Christ. They were in the ship with him. Trouble started. A storm arose. They became worried. They became anxious. They were fearful. In their panic and their fear, they tried whatever they could do. But the storm remained the same. They worried. The worry did not remove the problem. Many times we worry. But the worry doesn't increase, doesn't um, improve or remove the problem. They were afraid. Fear did not remove the problem. They had different thoughts in their minds. Are we dying? Are we perishing? Is this the end of life? The thoughts did not remove the problem. Eventually they called on Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ awoke. What did he do? What would you have done if you were? You have worried, the problem is still there. You have run helter-skelter, the problem is still there. You have done the best you know how, the problem is still there. What would you have done? Put your finger there, we'll come back to it. Mark chapter 9. And from verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake unto thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Here is another situation. The problem is this, this child, the beloved child of the father, an only child, important and essential to the family. They couldn't lose him. One, the mother had suffered such a terrible pain bringing that child to life. And the mother will want the child to live. Not only that, since the child had been born, the trouble had been there. And they had spent a fortune almost all the age, to make sure that this child was killed. Because of that, the labor, the pain, the spending that had gone on the problem of the child, the only thing they wanted is that the child will be well. Then they heard that the disciples of Jesus were around. So they took the boy to the disciples of Jesus Christ. And those disciples, they prayed. They tried. They commanded. They did everything they could do. The child was still the same. The question is, if you have a problem, or your child has a problem, or your wife has a problem, or your husband has a problem, and you have prayed on your own, 
the problem is still there. You called other people around to pray along with you and the problem is still there. What do you do? Not that you have never prayed. Not that you have not tried. You have done everything that you knew how. You have spent money. You have traveled to far places. You've wept at night. You've stayed up at night taking care of this child. And eventually you have even taken the child to some people that know how to pray. And yet the problem is still there. What do you do? We'll come back. Mark chapter 11. And from verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree, a far up, having leaves, he came, if happily, perhaps, for adventure, he might find anything thereon to satisfy, to remove his hunger. And he came to it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Notice this again. He saw the fig tree. He desired so very much. He wanted so very much to take something out of that and eat. Looking thereon, there was nothing. What would he do? The most thing, the most important thing that we know how to do is just to pray. Talk to God. But we have prayed. But we have done everything we knew how to do. And we have quoted the promises. And yet the problem seems to be there. What did Jesus do? And what Jesus did to somebody not studying the Bible may look like peculiar. It may look as if nobody has done that before. And nobody will do that ever after. The children of Israel were coming from Egypt. And just at the time they were rejoicing to enjoy the miracle of deliverance, they heard the Egyptians were after them. And the Red Sea was in front of them. And they began to cry out. And Moses did what every one of us will do. He began to pray. He said, stand still. Don't move. Don't go forward. Don't go back. Stay where you are. Then he began to pray. He prayed and prayed and prayed. And the Red Sea kept on moving. Kept on moving. And nobody could plunge inside. And the Egyptians, they kept on moving as well. Coming from their back. And he kept on praying and praying and praying. The people were crying. He was praying. The sea kept on moving. The Egyptian army kept on moving. And God said, When you have prayed, and the army has not stopped, and the Red Sea has not parted, stop praying, do something, say something. And so he rose up. Say something now. Tell the children of Israel, move forward. Do something, stretch out your stick, and the thing will part. If he had continued praying, just praying and praying alone, praying and praying alone, and he didn't do something and say something, he would have been killed. Anna, a sorrowful woman, bitter woman, she was praying. She had not got a child. She prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And Eli matched her mouth and said, take away your alcohol, your wine from you. Oh, she said, I've not taken any alcohol, any wine at all. It's because I'm bitter in my spirit. I've married, there's no child. And it's a great reproach, a great body, a great sorrow on my heart. What did Eli do? This woman had prayed. Did Eli say, okay, I will pray for you too? No, no. After you have prayed, and the barrenness is still there, 
after you have prayed and the reproach is still there after you have prayed and it appears the mountain is still there say something and eli said something eli said go home be cheerful the lord has answered your prayer he didn't pray he wasn't speaking to god he was speaking to the woman when you are praying you are speaking to god but after you have spoken to god and a problem is still there god is expecting you you will say something you will do something now let's look at the case of jesus come back to mark chapter 4 the sea was stormy the waves were beating on the boat the boat was now full of water the disciples were panicking and afraid they were going to die and he woke up jesus 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 don't you care we perish what did he do did he speak to god if he did that would be praying but he didn't speak to god look at what he did and in verse 39 and he arose and rebuked the wind he spoke to the wind and said unto the sea that's not praying when you say something to god that's praying but when you know already god has given the word of faith the word of authority the word of power the word of dominion the word of deliverance to you and now you're speaking to that sea that problem that mountain you're not speaking to god you're not praying then you're making use of the word of authority and faith and so jesus arose rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm the answer had come when you are prayed over and over and it appears the mountain is still there the sickness is still there the problem is still there speak to that problem mark chapter 9 you remember i read to you in mark chapter 9 this child had been having problem and the problem was terrible the problem was caused by evil spirits and the child was brought to jesus christ what will jesus do talk to god or talk to the problem pray the disciples have prayed already but the problem is still there what then will jesus do look at verse 25 when jesus saw the people came running together he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him unto the problem that's not praying when you pray you are talking to god but when you speak the word of authority to a mountain or an evil spirit you are exercising delegated power and authority that is invested in you as a believer saying unto him thou dumb and deaf spirit i charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him and the spirit cried and rent him so and came out of him and he was as one dead that is he became very still quiet peaceful in so much that many said he is dead but jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose in mark chapter 11 i told you about the fig tree i read it to you there was no fruit on it what will jesus do in verse 14 jesus answered and said no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and his disciples had ate 
they heard when he was talking to that tree challenging that tree they knew he wasn't talking to god but he knew he was talking to the source of the problem and in verse 20 and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots the same ears that heard the same people that heard those same people they saw they heard when he said it the previous day now they saw when they were going on the following morning and then peter spoke out and peter calling to remembrance said unto him master behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away and jesus answering says unto them not unto peter alone asking the question or pointing out what had happened jesus pointed out the object lesson the practical lesson for every one of them and he said unto them he said jesus answering said unto them have faith in god for verily I say unto you, this God talking to you now, that when you are prayed and prayed and prayed, and the problem is still there, verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, talking to God is prayer, talking to the mountain is exercising authority. But many people don't know. All they do, they pray. Talking to God. Talking to God. Talking to God. But after you have spoken to God, and in your heart you know that there is an assurance. God is not sleeping. God has heard. God will never fail. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a God that is impossible for him to lie. He backs up his word. He hastens his word to perform it. And yet, I have spoken to God, prayed unto God. And I know God will never fail. And the mountain is still there. Then I know what to do. Whosoever, after speaking to God, after having faith in God, verse 22 have faith in god while you are talking to god and when you are spoken to god it appears the mountain is still there now this is what to do verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say 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 unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says that's a secret he shall have whatsoever he says we're told in Romans chapter 10 and in verse 8 but what says it the word is near thee even in thy mouth and in thine heart that tastes the word of faith the word of authority the word of power the word that changes circumstances which will preach that word is in your mouth and when you are prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and it appears the problem is still there then look at that mountain and speak the word of faith the word of authority and the word of power that's why the bible says in proverbs chapter 18 death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life 
are in the power of the tongue. What does that mean? Death. Death in the power of the tongue. Many of the children of Israel died because they said it with their mouths they were going to die. They were going from Egypt to Canaan. And the twelve spies had been sent out to Canaan. They came back. Ten of those people said there are giants there. The sons of Anakims, they are there. And it would be impossible for us to get in. In fact, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. And the children of Israel began to cry and they began to say, We are going to die. We are going to die. Caleb said, no, you will live. They said, no, we are, we are dying. Joshua said, don't say that. You will live. They said, no, we are going to die. And they died. Death in the power of the tongue. So Caleb said, okay, if you want to die, I will not die. Joshua said, I will not die. We are well able. We are getting over to the land of Canaan. We are going to possess the place. And we shall live. And they lived. Because they chose to live. Life in the power of the tongue. One day, there was a king that was very, very sick. He had married. He had no child. And he was very, very sick. At night, he will be moving here and there on the bed, wondering, should I die at this time? I have no son. I have nobody to take over the throne if I die. While he was in pain, a prophet came in. His name, Isaiah. Immediately he saw the prophet. He must have had some excitement because that was a great prophet of God. And this prophet came in and went through all the, instead of going all through the protocol, just said, let him in, let him in. He has a message for me. And Isaiah came in. And Isaiah said, I'm a prophet of God. And Ezekiel said, yes, I know. I know you are the prophet of God. What do you have for me? And Isaiah began to talk. A prophet began to talk and said, set your house in order because you will die and not live. And the king said, is that all you came for? And he said, yes. Is that all your message for me? He said, yes. Say that again. Set your house in order because you are going to die. You will not live. The king said, thank you very much. You can go. And that man faced the wall. Faced away from everybody. He didn't want their faces to register to him. That, oh yes, we believe what the prophet said. You are going to die. He said, God, I won't die. Isaiah came in now just to tell me that you sent him that i am going to die i'm sorry god i'm not ready i will not die why should i die look at all the work i've done in this kingdom and there is no child to take over that work god i'm sorry i won't take this one i will live and god told isaiah go back to that man he doesn't want to die yet tell him i give him 15 years and it's within the 15 years that he got a child that took over the throne after he died eventually. The power in the tongue. Your miracle is in your own mouth. If you say you will live, that's your miracle. You will live. If you say the devil will not kill you, you are right. You are right. Your word is more powerful than all the, power of that, all the powers of darkness. And if you make up your mind and you say... No, I'm not, I'm not dying yet. Doctor says, woman, you are going to die. You say, no, doctor. He says, yes. You say, I said, no, that I'm not dying yet. Psalm 118. And in verse 17. Psalm 118. Verse 17. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. You see that? That's your miracle. 
after you have prayed and prayed and prayed and it appears that there is no change it appears there is no remedy it appears that the case is even becoming worsened then send out the miracle from your mouth and say it out because jesus said whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt it in his heart but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says he shall have whatsoever he says look at what this man is saying here psalm 118 verse 17 i shall not die i shall not die but live can we all say that together i shall not die but live say it again say it once more that's your miracle if you say you are not dying yet you are not dying yet david said he looked at saul following him pursuing him wanting to kill him everywhere he turned and he thought he was hiding himself away when he looked back he saw saul again with thousands of people after little boy david and david had been anointed king that will reign over israel after saul and saul at night will leave the palace will leave all the conveniences and be tracing david on the mountain tops you know what david will do when everybody was afraid you see you are a young boy the whole king of the nation is after you young boy young boy has not even gone to university just innocent boy the king suspected this fellow that he was going to take the kingdom out of his hand and david had no purpose like that at all david was just happy being a shepherd boy doing the little that he had to do but the king suspected him so much and was after him was after him was after him was after him but david every time he saw the king after him wanting to kill him he will say though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i'll fear no evil thy rod thy staff they comfort me thou anointest my head my cup runneth over you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies surely he saw Saul behind him he saw Adna all behind him he saw all the people that were trying to shoot an arrow at him and take off his life oh he said no I know it's the valley of the shadow of death but I will fear no evil my life is not in Saul's hand my life is in the hand of the Lord and he said my times are in your hand O Lord and he said surely the feet of Saul they were behind him he said surely the people surrounding Saul wanting to shoot David at a snap of the finger they were all behind him he said surely goodness and mercy shall follow me he saw Saul following him he said no goodness and mercy shall follow after me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever was it so it was so that man became a king his miracle was in his mouth your miracle is in your mouth in Micah Micah chapter 7 Micah chapter 7 Micah is difficult to find for many people you open the last pages of the Old Testament and you keep on opening backwards and backwards and backwards you will come across Micah I'm still waiting for those who have not found Micah 
Because there is something important for you in Micah. Micah chapter 7. Have you got it? If you have got it, can you raise up your hand? Alright, those who have not got it, um, ask the person sitting by your side. How did you get it? I didn't get it. Micah chapter 7 and in verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I fall, I shall arise. Now you know some people that say, my business has fallen. My family, we are for all falling sick. Even myself, I have fallen into trouble. Change it. Change it. Don't keep on talking like that. Your miracle is in your mouth. When I fall, I will arise. When I fall, I will arise. When I fall, I will arise. That's your miracle. And you will arise in Jesus' name. When I sit in darkness, when I sit in confusion, when I sit and I'm surrounded by powers of darkness all around me, the Lord shall be a light unto me. That's your miracle. I shall not die, I will live. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death with Saul behind me? With all those suspecting people around me, I will fear no evil. Because the God of Jacob is my refuge. Is the ever present help in the time of trouble? And my enemy rejoice not against me. When I fall, I will arise. When I'm sick, I will get well. If I'm barren, I will have children. If I am down, he'll pick me up. And if, I, if it appears I'm in trouble, he clear away all the trouble. If there is a storm, he'll bring quietness and a calm. Your miracle is in your mouth. Your miracle is in your mouth. Once you have prayed, believe in God. And after you have believed in God, speak to that mountain. It will live your life in Jesus' name. Rise up and let's pray. Your miracle is there, right in your mouth. Word of power, word of faith, word of authority. Don't let the devil kill you. You are not ready to die yet. Don't let evil spirits torment you. They have no right. Bring out the miracle in your mouth. Speak out the miracle in your mouth. I will not die, I will live. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. I will not die. Amen. Amen. Remember what the Lord is telling us today. That after you have prayed, then you believe God. And thereafter, the miracle is in your mouth. Let's bow and eyes closed. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you because of your word. You are the Almighty One, never changing God, the faithful God. Lord, in every generation, you prove yourself to be mighty. And there is no devil, demon, spirit that can contest that power. With you, all things are possible. From the very beginning of creation until this present time, we've known of your power. We've known of your love. And you are an impartial God. You love everyone. Willing to manifest your power on behalf of everyone that needs help. Therefore, Lord, I present before you all the requests 
that your children are brought before you tonight and lord i pray that your power will begin to work in a mighty way in all their lives in jesus name lord for those who are sick i pray that you will send forth your mighty power and you will heal their sick bodies in jesus name for those who have been told that nothing short of an operation will get them out of their difficulty miraculous supernatural mighty god we look up to you and lord we pray that your mighty invisible hand will get into their bodies and whatever it is that the doctor is talking about operating that you'll take it off them in jesus name for those who have been harassed by evil powers evil spirits tormented afflicted lord i pray that they will be free completely in their bodies in their minds in their spirits in their brains in jesus name for those that have family problems mighty god god of love we pray to you that you will take those problems and their families away in jesus name Amen. i pray for those who are having problems with their businesses and how to have enough to support them support their families and to keep their work going i pray that your blessing mighty blessings from above you are the God that supplies all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Supply all their needs in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We know that you have answered. We stand on your promises. Because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen to me. After we have prayed, then the miracle is where? In our mouth. And now that we know that we have prayed and God has answered, I want you to say this after me. I shall not die. I, not die. I, will, live. I will live. The devil cannot destroy me. Evil spirits cannot destroy me. I shall live. I will not remain poor. God will supply my need. My family will not remain barren. God will give us our children. All I need. All I've, All I've asked. All I desire. All I desire. They are mine. They are mine. My, mountains are My mountains are removed. My problems are solved. My, are solved. My, sicknesses, are My sicknesses are gone. Surely now. Surely now. Goodness, and mercy Goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. Amen. If you really believe it is so, if you really believe it is so, if you really believe it is so, then praise the Lord your God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because I believe it so. I believe it so. I believe it so.